So, with that uh, we have studied uh, the covariance matrix and uh, that finishes the study of covariance. We will move to the next uh, and final topic in multiple random variables which is transformed random variables. Uh, Let us say you have uh, two random variables w and x, uh, they are general random variables they can be independent, dependent whatever right? w and x are two random variables. Uh, now we define two other random variables y and z, y is a function of w and x, let us say y is g of w comma x and z is h of w comma x. You can ask the question can you give the uh, mean uh, can you give the density of y and z in terms of the density of w and x. The question is what is the joint density of y z? Let us say you have the joint density of w and x, uh, can you give the joint density of y z? In general it is not possible, in general it might be quite complicated, but for a special case where this happens to be a uh, invertible transform. What do I mean by invertible transform? By, by that I mean that uh, from y z you can get back w and x, from, uh, from w x you got y and z because that is the definition, y and z are functions of w and x. But if they happen to be invertible from y and z you can get back w and x. So that means that there exists some functions q and r such that w is equal to q of y comma z and x is equal to r of y comma z. So these q and r are effectively inverses of g and h. So, G and H transform W X to Y Z, uh, Q and R transform Y Z to W X. Right? So, if this these Q and R need not always exist, right? you can clearly imagine a case where uh, it is not possible. Why is that? Uh, Let us say if G of W comma X was uh, W and H of W comma X were also W. Right? So, let us take the extreme case where G of W comma X is W, H of W comma X is W. Right? In this case, uh, y is always going to be equal to z which is also going to be always going to be equal to w right. That means that from w and x you can get back y and z, but from y and z you cannot get back w and x because x is effectively last right. So y equal to z equal to w, so x you cannot recover x from y and z. So in such a situation it is not an invertible transform, but for cases where g and h are invertible you can get back that is you can get back w and x from y and z, uh, there is a, a pretty uh, important rule which is called the change of variable rule uh, in at least in probability. It is related to the change of variable rule in calculus, uh, we will do that right. I mean I am not going to derive this entirely, but I will give the broad intuition behind this. So what is f y z of y comma z? This is equal to the probability of y comma z, the vector y comma z belonging to this particular rectangle right. The, the one corner is y comma z, this corner is y plus dy comma z plus dz. Right, this is a semi graphical semi symbolic uh, derivation I am not going to derive this, this is just going to illustrate what we have to do. Right? So f y z of y comma z is simply the probability of y comma z, y belonging to y plus dy and z belonging to z plus dz divided by dy dz. So uh, expressing that in a graphical way this is equal to probability of y comma z belonging to uh, the, the rectangle given by this where one end is y comma z, this other diagonal is y plus dy comma z plus dz. Of course, this would be uh, y plus dy comma z and this would be y comma z plus dz right. So, that would be the four points of this rectangle. So, what is the probability that y comma z belongs to this? Uh, here is where you can use the invertibility of, w, of uh, y comma z and w comma x that is you happen to know the density of w comma x that was the starting premise of this uh, problem right. So, can you get back the density of uh, can you get the density of y and y comma z from the density of w comma x. 
and because this happens to be an invertible thing, so probability of Oikama z belonging to uh, this particular square should exactly equal to probability of w, x let us move the dy dz to the left side uh, so that we have some space. So, the probability of uh, y comma z belonging to this particular rectangle is exactly equal to the probability of w comma x belonging to uh, we will not call it a rectangle we will just do the 4 points right. So, y comma z should be transformed by q comma r into as follows it is going to be q of y comma z into r of y comma z that is it is actually going to be a parallelogram I am going to give the answer away already. So, what is this the, the leftmost point here is simply q of y comma z comma r of y comma z right. So, that is the left point here. The right point is simply q of y plus dy comma z plus dz and r of y plus dy comma z plus dz and similarly you have these 4 points and these 4 points form a parallelogram you can easily see that they do not form a rectangle always but they always form a parallelogram. So, now that is the uh, key part here this even though you start off with the probability of y comma z belonging to the rectangle that is equal to the probability of w comma z x belonging to this parallelogram and so this means that you have the probability this uh, this probability let us say the parallelogram is small enough then this is equal exactly equal to the pro the density of w comma x at the point q of y comma z and r of y comma z times the area of this parallelogram. Okay. So, this dy you had dy dz corresponding to the area of this rectangle but on the right hand side you would have if you had the density of uh, w comma x you have to have the area of this parallelogram and I am not going to go into the calculus part of it and the area of a parallelogram is related to this uh, related to what is called the determinant of the Jacobian uh, given by of this matrix. I am not going to go into the great details here, but this effectively says that f y z of y comma z is equal to dy dz is equal to f x y sorry f w x of effectively the inverse of y comma z right. So, y comma z is some uh, numbers you can invert y comma z to get w comma x w comma x of it is q of y comma z r of y comma z but it does not stop here because here left hand side you had the area of the square area of the rectangle but on the right hand side you have the area of this parallelogram and that area of the parallelogram is determinant of the Jacobian right. What is this Jacobian? J is the matrix given by as follows. You take the operator which converts y comma z to w comma x and you can write that as to q by to y do q by do z then do r by do y do r by do z this matrix is called the jacobian which is effectively collecting the gradients of these two functions q and r are two functions and it collects the gradients of these two functions in its row op operators and, and it is in its row matrices and its row vectors this is called the Jacobian matrix. And the determinant of this Jacobian is intimately related to the area of this parallelogram. I am not going to uh, great detail into showing this, but uh, why do you get this Jacobian that is because of the uh, you want to relate the area of uh, this parallelogram to uh, you want to get the area of this parallelogram and that is effectively given by the determinant of this Jacobian. I hope you know what the determinant means determinant of a at least for 2 cross 2 matrices it is pretty simple in this case it is dou q by dou y into dou r by dou z minus dou q by dou z into dou r by dou y. This is called the change of variable 
rule in uh, uh, to get the density of derived random variables from original random variables. So, this can be uh, sorry into d y d z. So, the d y d z can be cancelled on both sides which would effectively mean that you have the density of this random variable y and z the joint density of this random variables y and z is given by the joint density of the random variables w and x evaluated at q of y comma z and r of y comma z times the Jacobian. This Jacobian can depend on y and z also right because you can see that the Jacobian is the derivative of q with respect to y and z and r with respect to y and z the Jacobian can also depend on y and z. Let us do a very simple couple of examples uh, let us take the simplest example that we can think of w so let us say w is uh, distributed as uniform 0 1 and z uh, x is distributed uniform 0 1 and let us say they are also independent are independent w x independent. Uh, now we will define a two uh, pair of random variables y and z say y is equal to w plus x and z is equal to w minus x. Of course, in this particular example you do not need to go to the extreme of uh, the using the change of variable rule, but change of variable rule gives a very elegant answer here and uh, it is applicable for more complex cases also. So, you have two random variables y and z, y is equal to w plus x and z is equal to w minus x. You will see that even though the w and x are independent random variables, y and z are not independent random variables, you will see that pretty easily. Why is that? Well, uh, you can draw a pretty simple curve here. Uh, so, y which is w plus x can take values in the range of 0 to 2 and z which is w minus x can take values in the range of minus 1 to 1. In fact, so w plus x and w minus x the joint distribution will actually be non-zero in this diamond. Not being very exact the diamond shape here this is y and this is z. So, outside this diamond y and z density of y and z is going to be 0 and within uh, in, within this diamond it is going to be non-zero. Why is that? Well, that is follows simply from uh, the logic of y being w plus x and z being w minus x and you can clearly see that y and z are uh, not independent. Right? I mean uh, a characteristic feature of uh, an independent pair of random variables is that the, uh, the support or the reason where it is non-zero is a perfect rectangle or union of rectangles. It cannot have diamond shape. Uh, things where you have this region is has 0 joint density, but it has uh, the neither marginals are not 0, right? both the marginals are not 0, but the joint is 0 here. So, this clearly is not a independent pair of random variables. So, now okay, that is aside now, wow, now what we want is what is the joint distribution or the joint density of y and z. How do we get that? Well, here is where you can uh, use our change of variable rule. The first question you should ask is, is this an invertible transform? From w and x we got y and z, but from y and z can we get back w and x? Yes, easily you can. Uh, w is equal to y plus z by 2 and x is equal to y minus z by 2. So, this is a pretty easy inverse uh, to get you can from, uh, from y and z you can get back w and x why is that because y plus z by 2 would simply be w and uh, y minus z by 2 would simply be x. This is a pretty easy. So, now we have that this q and r functions do exist. So, q of y comma z is simply y plus z by 2 and uh, r of y comma z is simply y minus z by 2. With that can we get the Jacobian now? What is the Jacobian? Recall Jacobian has this dou q by dou y right. 
So, q is y plus z by 2. So, dou q by dou y is simply 1 by 2 and similarly dou q by dou z is also equal to 1 by 2. What about dou r, r, r of y comma z is y minus z by 2, dou r by dou y is half and dou r by dou z is minus half. So, because q is equal to y plus z by 2 and r is equal to q of y comma z is y plus z by 2 and r of y comma z is y minus z by 2. So, we have the Jacobian is this and what is the absolute value of the determinant of this Jacobian? Uh, we can compute that pretty easily which is going to be equal to uh, determinant of Jacobian here is simply 1 by 4 minus minus 1 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 2 or the absolute value is 1 by 2. I mean, if you computed the uh, value is minus 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4 this is minus 1 by 2 but we are only interested in the absolute value because area cannot be negative. So, the absolute value is uh, simply equal to 1 by 2. So, that is we have the determinant of the Jacobian is 1 by 2. Now, we can go back to get our density functions. We have f y z of y comma z is equal to f w x of you have to uh, apply the inverse q and r to y and z which is going to be equal to y plus z by 2 comma y minus z by 2 into the determinant of uh, the Jacobian absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian which is 1 by 2. And f w x of y plus z by 2 y minus z by 2 is particularly nice because we assume that w and x were independent random variables. And because w and x are independent random variables we have this is f w of y plus z by 2 into f x of y minus z by 2. Into 1 by 2. And if you evaluate this, when when is y plus z by 2, when, when is this term non-zero? Uh, because w and x were uniform uh, 0, 1, there are only two values fw and fx takes, either 1 or 0. Okay. So, you just need to ask the question, when is fw of y plus z by 2 non-zero? Well, fw of y plus z by 2 non-zero if y plus z by 2 is between 0 to 1. When is fx of y minus z by 2 non-zero? Well, when y minus z by 2 is between 0 and 1. If you put all of that together, this entire f y z of y, uh, y comma z is non-zero when y plus z by 2 is between 0 and 1 and y minus z by 2 is between 0 and 1. If you, when is, when is that going to happen? Right. So, this is the y axis, this is the z axis. y plus z by 2 is between 0 and 1 and y minus z by 2 is also between 0 and 1. If you put that both together you get this 2, 0, 1 comma 1 and 1 comma minus 1. So, within this diamond it is non-zero and what is the value here? The value is going to be this is 1, this is 1 and this is half. So, within this diamond the value it is going to take a value of half and outside uh, this diamond it is going to take a value of 0. So, this is a pretty uh, simple example but you can apply this to even pretty uh, even complicated examples where you do not have constant Jacobians but rather uh, Jacobians which are functions of y and z. The reason why we are doing this is because this will be a useful tool for studying multivariate uh, normal distributions. Uh, with that we can wrap up uh, this chapter where we study multiple random variables.